Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudo Buyo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 19W34D of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition. Uh, and in this video I'm going to revisit my tweaking of the Iron Golem spawning cell in order to take care of what I hope are the last issues with this because it's, uh, it's actually starting to get pretty technical. Um, the first thing I want to take care of, uh, you see these slabs down here. These slabs were intended to prevent two iron golems from meeting in the center and blocking each other going into the hole. Uh, if I were to have two iron golems uh, on either side of the hole, one there and one over here, um, the water uh, pushing each of them into the hole is basically pushing with equal force and because of the width of iron golems, they would just bump up against each other uh, perpetually and neither one would fall in the hole, basically shutting off the production of the cell. Uh, that's not something I wanted, so I added these slabs in the hopes that uh, removing some of the water flow here uh, would mean that the force that's being exerted on an iron golem that's uh, standing in this position would be less than the force over here so that the one over here could push the other one out of the way and this one over here could fall into the hole first. Uh, it turns out that that, uh, that didn't turn out to be the case. Even though there's uh, the water is too wide over here, the force that it's exerting on the iron golem seems to be the same as the force over here, even though the water here is only one wide. Uh, and I, I still had iron golems blocking each other from falling in the hole when I was doing my tests. So I, I decided to take a little bit harder look at this and uh, revisit, uh, uh, revisit this to see if I could figure out exactly how to do this um, to make sure that uh, uh, nothing is actually going to go wrong here. And, and uh, what I figured out is that um, the spots that are directly uh, adjacent to the hole here, right on the edge, all eight of those spaces, each of them comes from only a single water source block. Uh, so let's just pick this one here. This uh, spot here comes from only the water source block right here. So if I get rid of that water source block, that space will become dry because it's not getting water from any other source blocks. So um, what I want to do then is I want to make sure that I have some flow of water that's not going straight in, which means I'm going to have to uh, get water to this space coming from a different water source block. Uh, and water can reach this particular spot um, uh, from this space seven, uh, seven blocks away in, in uh, taxi cab distance. Uh, which means that a uh, water source block here will cover that space um, also here, 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 and here, and here. Uh, there are also a bunch of other, uh, other spots uh, where I could put source blocks, but they would result in water flowing into the hole. So um, these basically are my only options. A water source block in any of those spots uh, will cause flowing water to be on this space here. Uh, and I want this flowing water to have a different direction than the flowing water on the other side over here. Uh, in that way, uh, I would create a different force. Uh, so if the water is coming in diagonally, it should be fine. If it's uh, kind of over to the side and forcing golems are, are you know, kind of around the edge, uh, that would also be okay. Uh, so for a, a variety of different reasons, I'm actually going to, uh, so let's leave that source block here. That's now source block water. I, I'm going to be using this space right here. Let me get rid of these, uh, these other slabs. Uh, so I'm going to be putting a water source block right here. Now I, I, I have to put something in between this space and this space because if I uh, just make this a water source block, um, uh, this will, uh, um, this water source block here and this water source block here will cause this one here to become a water source block and that'll cause a big cascade uh, and create a big mess. So I'm going to put a slab in between. So there's a water source block right there and I'm going to put a water source block right there. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but if I isolate it, you can tell that there's a water source block right there. And I'm going to be dropping one more slab uh, right behind, right against the wall here, uh, because this is still water. It's not flowing. So, uh, I, And this is fine. A player can stand on these slabs and not be pushed by the water, but because golems are, uh, are wider than one block, they're always going to get pushed by the water uh, forward. So, um, And these slabs also are not going to prevent iron golems from spawning on the block underneath. 
because slabs are transparent blocks and uh, that does not violate the iron golem spawning criteria. So uh, I'm not actually sacrificing any spawning area of the iron golems by placing those slabs down. Okay, so I've got two slabs against the wall and I've got a water source block right there, uh, right there and we can see now this water source block, uh, or sorry, this uh, flowing water right at the edge here, it is no longer going straight into the hole. It's, it's just a little bit, di it's you know, basically diagonal. Uh, and I'm going to want to do that, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that on all four of the sides in order to create a, a bit of a, um, a bit of a spiral sort of, uh, a spiral, a spiral sort of uh, water flow around the hole here. Uh, so I need to do that on the other three sides. Uh, I've got one block away from the hole, so uh, and then um, my water source block is going to go uh, on the second block away from the hole. So there's one, two, and I'm going to put two slabs and a water source block. Let me do that for the other two sides here. There's one, two slabs and a water source block. And the fourth side one, two slabs, and a water source block. Uh, and now I have uh, water that's um, kind of curling in, um, uh, curling in from all those water source blocks, but it's still pushing basically evenly into the hole uh, because these, uh, these, this flowing water is basically pushing things into the center and the same thing on the opposite side. So now I'm going to take a, uh, another slab uh, and I'm going to put it on all four of these spaces, create a little bit of a pinwheel there. Uh, and now what's happening is the water is pushing sort of, um, well, kind of, in a, uh, kind of in a spiral around the hole. Things that still fall into the hole. Uh, but I still have even water flow uh, going towards the hole. And um, even though iron golems wouldn't get stuck uh, um, uh, just stationarily uh, bumping up against each other, what would happen is that they, they can actually still get stuck. They just get stuck against each other going around in a circle. Uh, it's a little bit weird to watch, uh, but that happens. Uh, in order to break that pattern, I want to make sure that this water flow here is not going into the hole at all. Uh, and I can do that by placing a slab right there. And now we see that this water is flowing uh, perpendicular, uh, sorry, parallel to the edge of the hole. So it's not actually pushing into the hole. And I'm going to do place a slab like this on two adjacent sides. So I've got one there and I've got one here. And so this side and this side, uh, the water coming from the wall is pushing uh, against the, uh, pushing parallel to the edge of the hole. And that will cause golems to kind of circle around a little bit uh, to fall in on these sides over here. Uh, so it does take slightly longer to push golems out of the farm, um, but the extra amount of time is, is pretty negligible. Uh, but in my testing, this is really one of the only configurations that I've found that always, always, always dumps golems through. Uh, you know, I, I would drop you know 50 golems in here and they'd all uh, all end up getting pushed through the hole. Um, it wouldn't create any kind of stable states where uh, where you just have uh, golems blocking each other. Uh, so this configuration is pretty much guaranteed to knock golems into the hole all the time. Uh, there are a couple of other features of this particular pattern that prevents golems from getting stuck in other ways. Um, but this one seems to work relatively well. Um, uh, again, I'm not actually sacrificing any of the spawning area by placing slabs down. And uh, no matter where golems spawn, they're always going to be pushed by some water. Uh, and so they're always going to end up dropping into the hole here. Uh, so that is going to take care of my water, hopefully for good. I don't want to deal with that anymore. Um, the other issue that I want, that uh, I ended up discovering the hard way um, relates to doors. So. It turns out that um, hard difficulty plus lighting glitch plus uh, spawning zombie equals broken doors. Uh, <laughs> zombies will, uh, if I get a zombie spawning here due to a lighting glitch, and uh, all of these spaces should be lit to a light level 8 or above, uh, 
but if there's a lighting glitch and, and mobs do spawn here and if that mob is a zombie, uh, the zombie will detect the villagers down here and eventually it will try to reach them by breaking the doors. It's, um, e even if it's a baby zombie and it breaks the door and can actually get through the hole here, it's not going to get to the villagers because um, it uh, gets picked up by the water stream. Uh, but uh, I don't want them breaking my doors at all. Uh, and, and there's a, a bit of a strange solution to that, and it has to do with the fact that um, zombies cannot uh, or do not attempt to break open doors. Uh, so let me go ahead and grab a door here. Uh, now, this door here, if I place this door here, uh, it is closed uh, by default, and so a zombie uh, that's stuck behind it trying to get at a villager would break it. Uh, now, this door here is closed, but it's closed for this direction, and if I open it, <laughs> now it um, uh, it looks like it's closed, but it's actually open, and you can check its, uh, check its state uh, by viewing it with the debug information. Uh, in the, uh, on the right hand side, towards the bottom of the text there, you can see something that says open true, uh, and that is because that door is technically open, and zombies will not try to break that door. Uh, so, if I were to change all of my doors, and, uh, and rather than placing them like this, if instead I place them uh, like this, and then I just simply open them all, it looks pretty much the same, except zombies will not try to break these doors. Um, the problem is, the way in which a village is uh, is determined is determined by uh, open doors with respect to uh, skylight visibility. And now these doors, um, they, the calculation to determine whether they are doors of the village uh, is not in this direction here, because this is the open direction for these doors. I instead, uh, it, the um, village calculation is determined in this direction. So I need different levels of skylight uh, on either side of all of these doors in, in, uh, uh, with a, um, in five blocks on either side. So I need to have uneven levels of skylight. Uh, now, that's fine for this door here, that's fine for this door here, and that's fine for this door here. But this door here, um, uh, starting from this block, uh, let me grab something, a marker here, it's one, two, three, four, five. No skylight is falling uh, on the side of this door, and one, two, three, four, five. No skylight is falling uh, on the other side of that door. So there are even levels of skylight in five uh, five blocks in either direction uh, uh, on either side of that door, which means that this door is not counted as a door of the village. And the way to fix that then is just to take this uh, uh, take away this door. And let's go ahead and fill in here, and I'm going to instead place it over closer into the corner. So, if I can get in there, there we go. Alright, so there we go. So, if, the, if you've got four doors on either side of the farm all the way into the corner, and you place these so that they are uh, so that they're closed in line with the wall, and then open them, uh, that will make sure that all of these doors are counted as doors of the village, but now they're all technically open, so zombies won't try to break them. So I'm going to go ahead and reorient all of my doors, and I'm going to correct my water flow, and I think that is it then uh, for my tweaking of these iron golem uh, spawning cells. I'm going to go ahead and build an iron farm, uh, a, a new iron farm in uh, my 1.9 survival world. Uh, probably I'll go ahead and uh, make some of these tweaks to an existing iron farm in my 1.8 survival world uh, just to make sure that I don't have any problems with it. Uh, that is it then for this video. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please do leave a note in the comments, and thank you for watching.